Welcome back to the Wildlands where we're gardening off-grid in central Portugal and we're building a food forest aiming to be self-sustaining and growing all our own food as quickly as possible. So what do we have going on in tonight's episode, Missy? First of all, you're going to show everyone what you've been up to with your banana circle. Very exciting. Progress. Yeah, made a lot of progress on my banana circle. I cover up a berm very, very speedily. There's a lot of speedy goings on in tonight's video, isn't there? going on, yep. I also redo one of our raised beds from last year. We had a problem with bowls, so I'm fixing them. And also we build our new Vegar raised beds and give them as a gift to our chickens. Find out how our chickens are going to use our raised beds a bit later. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was a lot of hard work. It was. And uh, plants for free. It's back. It's Dom again. <laughs> Showing you how to get free plants. And tonight we're looking at Spanish reed. Which is very cool. Which is very cool. And you grow Spanish reed in England and in cooler places and it's a great hedging plant, so stay tuned to see how to get plants for free there. And we finish up with a little seed update. I'll take you for a tour around my half of the cold frame and compare notes with the last time I gave you a little seed update, which is, uh, yeah, there's progress there too. So lots of progress this week, so enjoy tonight's episode. banana circle. It's about three, maybe four weeks since I first started the banana circle. Been back to England in that time and we've also had a lot of rain and a lot of frost. You can see that the compost has dropped quite considerably in height and all I've actually added in the last three or four weeks is a top layer of greens and over there I have a pile of mixture of wet straw and chicken pooed on straw so I'm going to put that on the top and I'm going to put this wood chip on there and then I'll probably do one last layer of greens and top it off and then I'm going to cover the berm around the outside with manure to make it look nice and finish off the path around the outside and then in one to two weeks I'm gauging the weather I'm going to get my bananas planted out so although I'm going to keep my bananas outside next winter They'll have had the whole summer and the autumn to get their roots fully established, so I don't want to plant them out and risk a frost before they've got their roots deep down in the soil. So I'm going to wait one or two weeks until there's no risk of frost, and then I'm going to plant all my lovely bananas. In the center, on the downside of the berm, towards the center, I'm going to put alocasia and carnas. Behind me, I'm going to put some bamboos and try and create a bit of a windbreak from here. And uh, I'm very excited. That's layer four done. And I'm gonna do a fifth, possibly even a sixth layer. I'm just gonna keep building it up. Every week or two, I'm gonna to add to it. And I meant to put a load of tissue and cardboard down before I put the wood chip on and I forgot. But never mind, that can go in the next layer. So now I've got two bags of organic cow and horse manure. And I have got my own horse manure in the compost bins by the greenhouse, but I know this is sterile and well rotted. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that around the outside, make the top of the berms look nice and to blend in, ready to get this area finished. And then when we plant the bananas, I'm gonna dig very big holes in the berms and pack it full of organic material and manures and so on to give the bananas a really good start. So it will all be black and that will raise it up a little bit. But it's amazing to think that three or four weeks ago, this hole was over three foot deep to the top of these berms. So the berms have maybe sunk a little bit in the rain, but only a couple of inches. So we've got a good three to three and a half foot of compost in the middle of rotting organic material. If you remember from a minute ago, that's already sunk considerably. It probably, if I did all of these layers right now, one after the other would be four or five foot high, maybe even as high as me, and they've sunk down, started to rot. 
probably also a bit of heat going on in the middle. If I turned it, it would rot quicker and heat up quicker. I'm not too fussed about that. It's just a long game here of getting this organic goodness to be seeping into the water table as the water collects in this circular berm so that the bananas can benefit from all the nutrients. Bananas are exceptionally hungry and love organic material and fertilizer to make them grow big and fast. Good morning. Today I've got a little job that needs doing. This raised bed, we had carrots growing in it last year and they did really well. And we were starting to get carrots this big and then we we're getting carrots this big. And then when we were expecting to get full size carrots, I came down and pulled a couple of the tops. And what happened was I got the top in my hand and there was just a little carrot stump and they'd been eaten. So we think we've had a vole or a mouse and it's come up from underneath and just <laughs> eaten all the roots so that you couldn't even see that they'd been eaten, which is very disappointing. So I've decided I'm gonna dig out all of the earth that's in there. I'm gonna stick it on this top that I'm standing on. Then I have this, which is, it looks like cloth and it's very lightweight, but it's made of metal. So I'm going to staple that to the bottom inside of the bed and then pull the earth back in it and then sow some carrots. First though, I have to dig up these perennial kales that I've had in here over the winter and move them somewhere else in the garden. Done, it's time to sow some carrots. I have my seeds here. I've got this one, a Jean de Doubs, which is a yellow one. I've got a couple of varieties of just standard long orange carrots, and I've got um, baby carrots Paris Market, which grow um, small and round. I'm also going to put in some radishes because radishes grow really, really quickly, so I'll be able to harvest them when it's about time to sow my next lot of carrots. You want to keep sowing your carrots every so often so that you don't just get one big lump of carrots in a glut and then you've got no more. Um, so we're succession sowing those. So I have some home saved seeds, which I'm very excited to see if they're actually gonna grow. And I've got bog standard radishes. I've got these ones, which are, what does it say? White point, medium, long, red. <laughs> so they're long radishes and um, rat's tail radishes from um, Gary, seeds from Gary, which I'm excited about. I have no idea what a rat's tail radish is, but we'll give them a go. And then also I'm gonna plant some spring onions just to put off any carrot flies. Carrot flies can be a problem, particularly not if you're growing in raised beds, if you're growing in the ground, then carrot flies tend to fly close to the ground. When they smell carrots, or carrot greens, they just know. They go in there and they lay their eggs and then um, their maggots eat all of your carrots under the ground. And when you pull them up, you can't eat them because they're all manky. Uh, so the first thing you can do to avoid that is to sow in a raised bed because then hopefully your carrots are growing higher than the carrot flies expect them to be. Honestly, it's not like normal flies that fly everywhere. They fly really close to the ground, like sniffing out the carrots. Um, and the other thing you can do is you can try and confuse them. So if one should happen to fly a little bit higher than he should be and he smells the onions, then it might make him, oh, it might make him um, think that there's no carrots growing there. So that's the idea. Okie dokie. All right, put all my seeds down here for a minute because the first thing I need to do is I want to sow them straight and I want to sow them in what they call drills. So I'm going to use this board and I'm just going to wiggle it in the ground like this. And then I can do nice straight lines. That's good. Uh, and then because they're carrots, they don't need to be very far apart. So I can probably put my next line here. because obviously most of the space that they take up is growing down into the soil, not growing out sideways. So I see, um, we'll have some carrots, some radishes, some carrots, some spring onions. So we need another drill. And then as we start harvesting, 
some of the carrots. We will sow a few more. There we go, that's good to be getting on with already. Let's try some of these yellow ones because they look interesting. Wow, these seeds are so tiny. Look how weeny those seeds are. Oh, I don't want them to blow away. Probably should have picked a calmer day. I'm trying to sow them thinly. And then when they germinate, if there are too many close together, then you're supposed to cut off the seedlings, the tops, or pull them out if you can. I think that's where we'll end the yellow ones. Um, I tend to pull them out and eat them as teeny tiny baby carrots. Even the ones that don't have a proper root yet, they still taste the carrot tops are just so delicious. And I write on here that it's a carrot and the type Jean du du and the date that I sowed them. And if I put that there, then I will know that all the way along there is where I've sown that type of carrot. Now we can just brush the soil back over the top. Get a little firm. Lovely. That's it for today for this bed. I've sown radishes, carrots, spring onions. I used um, Branca de Lisboa, which is a Portuguese traditional um, white onion, and you can pull them up as spring onions, but if you leave them in the ground, then you get nice, big, bulbed white onions um, to use for salads, really, not, not like the yellow or the brown skin ones you see in the supermarkets. It seems to be a Portuguese variety, and we've had them from supermarkets, and they're really tasty. So I'm excited to try sowing them growing them rather just finish off that little line because i had not done that do, 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 do. there we go so i'm happy with that i just give it a little water so i've left the back couple of inches there's about three or four inches there spare so i might use it to put some flowers in or something else or maybe just another row of carrots in a couple of months time so that's this bed done on to the next job what have you got there I've got our new Vegar raised bed. How exciting. This is exciting. It looks heavy. It is quite heavy. <laughs> and I've already built two of the small ones. And we were given these very kindly by Vegar. And we're donating them to our chicken area, aren't we? Hmm. So we've got a, a low one here. And we've got a high one, which I'm going to build. I'm going to show you how to build it really, really quick because it's very straightforward. And then we're going to plant them up with flowers and snacks and tidbits and plants for the chickens, aren't we? Yes. Lots of chard and beetroot and everything that they like to eat so we can pick it out here and chuck it straight in for them to eat. So let's get this one up and then we've got a round one which we're doing something quite unique with that I've not seen anyone else do so we'll show you that at the end. They do. I really like them. They're smart. So I think the, the small one will just put straw in the bottom and then earth on top. Yes. 
and then the big one will get rid of that big pile of twigs and Stick small things. logs and so on and fill the bottom half or more. Jar to make a chicken compost. How does that work, do you know? We're just gonna chuck scraps and stuff in. We bring them stuff all the time, fresh weeds usually, bits and bobs, but sometimes chick um, kitchen scraps. Chicken scraps. Yeah. Uh, and we scatter it on the floor and we've decided if we put it in here, then they, they'll they probably run off with some of it, but eventually it'll build up and mix with their poops yep. and be all scritch scratched as they like to do. And all it'll the turn seeds into... taken out. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And the bugs, and it'll be um, turned into compost. And then we can just lift the circle off every so often. Mm -hmm. Load it in a wheelbarrow. Take the compost away and start again. So let's get it full. Oh, they're gonna go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some of it's big sods that we need to put upside down. So I thought they'd like that. Look at that. And that'll act as a step as well. <laughs> oh! There you go, ladies. What have we got here? That looks good. Sweet Pea, Betty, and Maggie, the original ladies, all right in there. Come on, Gloria. It's a bit big for me, I'm not sure I can Come get on, over darling. the wall. I need a step. Big jump. She does need a step, doesn't she? Let me go get her a step. Oh. No, she done it. There. Oh, look. Flapjack's telling his ladies, look, Ed, oh, look what you've got in here, then. Oh, that is good, <laughs> Oh, aren't they sweet? Come on, darling. There you go, sweetheart. So I think the chicken composter is a hit. It's the chicken definitely say, yes, we like it. I'm surprised they can balance on this. Yeah. Doing a good job. Ooh. Swanky, eh? Ah! <laughs> you can't actually see what's in here because all the plants we put in are this big. See, it went very well. Took a lot of detritus, twigs and earth to fill the big one. Yep, that was hard work. But as you'll have seen, so we started off, the bottom two thirds were full of small logs, lots of twigs, yep. stuff off the ground, bits of bark. Then we put some straw in, didn't we? Yeah. And then tops all off the land to weight it down. It is going to sink as it ages. It will, yeah. So that's good. Yeah, because no dig means every year you top up with yeah. a, a new mulch or compost. So we've planted along the back. I've got one metre sunflowers mm -hmm. and two metre sunflowers Jeez. alternating. They're going to be like Yeah, they're the trees. smallest we've got. That's, that's it, right. That's the one metre ones, obviously, like that. They're, 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 they're called dwarfs. Mm. And that's obviously there are shorter ones. What and then else I've put, put in homegrown dill. That'll get to about this big. Maybe this big, but it's going to be really ferny and feathery. And the chickens like to eat it. Then we have some turnips and golden beetroot, red beetroot and radishes, all of which that we'll just pick the little leaves of them and, and chuck them into the chickens. And what's in the front one? So in the front one, along the back, we've got much larger sunflowers, three metre ones. Cheapers. And, uh, and a bit of rocket at the front. And a bit of rocket and then we'll, we'll put more stuff in as it, as it 
hatches out. Yes, yeah, and I think we're just gonna, I'm gonna sprinkle some lettuce seed in here, just yeah, around. Yeah. Make it a nice covering, because it's for the chickens, isn't it? Yes, and I don't have chard, because I don't like the taste of chard, but I'm gonna buy chard because it's beautiful. I imagine Looks we'll have nice, yeah. big red and yellow and white stems yeah. with frothy leaves on the top, it's gonna be fab. So, thumbs up, I think. Yes, I'm really, really impressed with the quality of these. Yeah, very good quality, yeah. and I think the tall one is if you're less mobile or have a bad back, it's great. Not filling it. Not <laughs> filling it, but if you've got somebody to, to set it up for you, yes. then you don't have to do any stooping. I've seen a lot of people online have, have commented how great they are if you've got a bad back. And the low one, if you don't have space or if you won't be able to fill it. Yeah, this yeah. took a lot of work and that was, you know, Absolutely, five yeah. minutes really. And also worth pointing out that we've chosen this configuration. Both of these you can do in different configurations. So where you can see the joins, you could take any one of those and put it in the middle here so i could take one of these and make it obviously a foot wider or two of these and make it and i could so do you that. could end up with a square could make a square one and the same with the bottom one or a wider rectangle. or you can use less and make them shorter wider pretty cool what a pretty great cool. idea yeah and so simple to put together not all different parts i thought there were yeah. different bolt sizes and everything no. it's just very simple very simple so yeah. that's cool so yeah very pleased with our veg guys thanks yeah. very much for sending those over and we'll keep you appraised of how our plants do as we add more and more because it's now it's official plant planting time isn't it, it is yeah sunshine's out rain's still coming yeah which is good everything's looking green all the chickens are watching us in the chicken area with the compost what round one that's going really well they've been getting they in there it. all day long and i filled it up again this morning and they were in there so thumbs up from the chickens too <laughs> afternoon and welcome to another episode of plants for free and today we're looking at arundo donax or the spanish reed which is the largest grass in the world and it's a perennial. So here we have two in pots. So it's just started to come back, but it does reach massive height. Five, six, seven, even eight meters high, makes an amazing hedge. Grows all over the Mediterranean Peninsula and I've been propagating it for just over a year now. So these two haven't been split. So I'm gonna split them into two, I think. So it's very straightforward. We'll take them out and you can see it's got a good root structure. This is a new eye here and then it's it's quite uh, quite tricky to split so I'm going to make a big mess and we will need a sharp knife and I think I want to minimize the root disruption if I can and maybe just get a really sharp knife and go down the middle so if you have this grass in the ground as opposed to in pots like me, you can just fork out clumps. And as long as you've got some of these shoots or eyes, stick them in a pot or move them to a different part on your land. And as long as you don't leave it too late in the year, so maybe up till uh, end of April, you can probably just about get away with it. And then you can get plants for free and get yourself an amazing hedge. And when it's big and it blows in the breeze, it sounds absolutely lovely. So I've got a bread knife. I'm just going to cut down here there we go and that's now two plants I could probably split it further but I think that's ample for now And then this one, oh, he does have some new shoots down here hiding. So that's got green, so I think similar to last time, just going to go down here. Oh. That's a fail. That's not what you want to do. Cut, cut, not cut. So I'm still going to plant that because it's a rooty perennial so it might well grow i've just sliced off there might be some root structure in there so it's worth planting i'll put it in a little pot and that one's going to be fine because he's got new shoots and again you need to be careful of the shoots because they're quite brittle so a couple of inches in the bottom get it roughly to the same level it was at before And 
And these two stems, they do have a few little roots on, so I'm going to just uh, put them in water, I think. And just peel off some of this lower stuff, because it might be that they will behave like bamboos and shoot from the nodules. Worth a go, because otherwise they're only going in the bin. And then I might actually benefit from my error and found another way to propagate Arundo Donax or the Spanish reed. Pop them in there. So these are my row of Spanish reeds and if we count them up we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, with the eleventh pot being the one that I cut by accident at May Grow. So six of these I propagated last week. They've already got shoots coming up which you can see here. And the exciting thing is, is these originated from Porto in Portugal and Martin dug up two very short roots with just very short bits of grass on that I potted on and then I propagated last year from two to four and then this year we've gone from four to ten. So very exciting. We do like plants for free and you can apply this technique to any perennial grass. So happy propagating and enjoy getting lots of freebies. We're down at the cold frame for a little seed update. Now the last time that I showed you what we had sown in the cold frame, we got lots and lots of comments all along the lines of, wow, haven't you sown loads? You've got so much growing. And I have to tell you that that was just the beginning. <laughs> and uh, I've actually, I've run out of seed trays. I've almost run out of space in the cold frame and I haven't even sown everything that I want to sow. So let's look at some of the most exciting and interesting things that we've got growing at the moment. This whole tray here is cucumbers and melons. They were only sown on the 12th, so that was 10 days ago and I've got almost everybody up. We've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six different types of melons, two types of cucumbers, two types of gherkins and some patty pan squash coming up. This tray here is quite exciting too. It's all different types of basil. So we have Greek bush, lemon, Thai, Genovese, red, Queen of Sheba. Now the red and the Queen of Sheba we don't like the taste of, but we're growing them for the flowers and all the rest of them are to go in the kitchen garden. This is yarrow. Each of these, let me show you that a little bit closer up because it's teeny tiny. This is a um, medicinal herb and it's so small that you have to sew it in a tray like this. And when each of these little guys has two more leaves on it, I have to prick them out, which means I have to take them out with um, very tiny tools and be very, very careful and take each one out and put it in a pot. So that's enough to keep me busy for, uh, well, several hours. Now these guys are quite interesting too. All of these ones here, they're all mugwort that I grew from seed. What I find interesting about them is that this is also mugwort. Now all of these were sown on the same day, the 1st of February, um, and these ones I just haven't quite gotten around to, haven't found the time to pot them on yet. So they're all teeny, 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 and the ones that I have potted on are what, four, five times the size? So it just goes to show that I should crack on and get these out into pots if I want them to actually mature. And it's a good lesson to me because I quite often leave things in their cell trays for too long, thinking that they're growing just fine. But what a difference that makes. These I'm super excited about as well. All of these here, these are pots of watercress. Again, sown from seed. And what's exciting about them is that I always used to think that watercress could only be grown in a pond or on the edge of a pond, or if you had very, very wet, boggy ground. And it turns out that you can grow them just as easily in a pot. When they're a little bit bigger, they'll just go on trays so that the earth that they're in can stay waterlogged, which is what they like. They like it nice and damp. and. Uh, this is fabulous in sandwiches or in, in salads. Very nice. Another little catch up compared with the last time I showed you the seeds is I told you about a little experiment I was doing with some dill. Now I sowed a row of eight plugs of um, shop bought dill seed and eight plugs of home saved dill seed from last year that I wasn't sure about the quality of. As it turned out the shop bought, every single one came up, 100% germination, and of the home saved, only two plugs came up. So that's just a 25% germination rate. I'm actually quite happy about that. I didn't expect the seeds would do anything at all. I thought they were pretty crisped in the sun. So all I need to remember is that when I'm using my home saved seed to maybe sow two or three times the amount what I actually want, and the, if they all come up, then that's a bonus. And if they don't, then I've had what I wanted.
Also, last time I showed you the seedlings, I showed you a tray of seeds that I'd sown specifically for the chickens. Some of those need a little bit more time to grow on, like the lemon balm and sage that will actually go inside their run. But some of the other leafier sort of snacky salads that I've grown for them have already gone out in the border on the outside of their outdoor run. We have things like um, red and gold beetroot, nasturtiums, radishes, turnips, uh, lots of nice leafy things and um, I've put them out here. They can't reach them yet because I don't want them to kill them off as babies, but as they grow, their leaves will get bigger, they'll flop over, and then they'll be able to reach because they quite often stick their little heads through the wide holes of the fence. And then they've got their own little salad buffet. and I planted some butter beans out yesterday. They're her favorite type of bean. So it's nice to have some here in the hoop house. Finally, it's been 10 days since I finished this and we've already got a whole bunch of radish up. They are the seed that I would recommend if you've never done sowing or growing before and you're a little bit nervous, go with radish. They're so confidence boosting. They come up almost immediately within 10 days. They grow really fast. Within the next couple of weeks, we'll be pulling radishes up and eating them. And they're really tasty and crunchy and fresh. And if you have chickens, they love the leaves. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Gardener's World <laughs> on the Wildlands. <laughs> there will be other projects incoming, but for the moment, everything is all plants, plants, plants. It's spring. We're past the equinox now. We Days are. are getting longer. It's there is exciting. sunshine. There's still rain. And uh, it's all go for the plants, isn't it? It is all go. But excitingly, in probably next week's episode, it's not about plants. It's oh, about yeah. baths, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So we showed you last week where we were going to site our outdoor bath for some naked activity outside in the bathing area. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. Okay, so that's spot number one. Let's take it to spot number two. Ready? Ready. Beep, beep. beep this beep. person is reversing. So location situation number two for the bath. Next week, hopefully, we're going to get that fitted and looking all snazzy and finishing off the back end of the food forest as well. Yes, yep, because the bath is just behind berm number four. <laughs> I feel like Silla Black was no. behind berm, berm number four. four. Surprise, surprise. Come on down. <laughs> so, um, we've, got to, we've got to weed it. We've got to put some more cardboard down. We've got to put some lovely plants in around the bath. I'm really looking forward to having all sorts yep. of aromatics and florals and lovely things so that you can look at that when you're in the we're bath. we put a beer tree there, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> Um, and then finally, I think the last little project down here will be the making of the pond. So that's at some point when food is on a slightly, when it's kind of taking care of itself, I think. Yep. The pond will be in a few weeks time. So thanks again for watching and thanks a lot for all of your comments. Your likes when you put a thumbs up on the video, it means a lot to us and it helps our algorithm. And thanks for all of your support on Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee as well. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again next week for another episode from the Wildlands. Bye.